And that's it. That's the three key things that you need to have fundamentally dialed in for your laser engraver. And I know that this has been a very long video, but I promise you, you only need to do this once. You only need to do it once. You, you've got all the settings, you've got your DPI setting, your defocus, and your min-max power settings. So every time you laser grave on this specific type of material, you already know what the settings are. We're diving into the world of image processing today. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through three key things that you need to get dialed in on your laser engraver so you can produce the best images possible for wooden engravings. If you've clicked on this video, you're probably trying to get the best images you can out of laser engraving images onto wood. Hopefully, I will be able to guide you through the process of being able to maximize the quality of the images that you are processing. Now, I'm gonna go through three key things that you need to get dialed in to get the best images possible. So when it comes to engraving images, there's been a lot of questions on social media saying, why are my pictures looking like they're washed out? And there could be one simple reason for this. So there's been a couple of statements where they've said that they've increased the max um, engraving power, but all it's doing is making the darkers really dark and they're still getting really washed out pictures. One of the most important things that you need to get dialed in to begin with is going to be your power settings. So the way in which a laser engraver works is when it travels across your workpiece, it will lay down a layer of dots. It will turn itself on, then off, then on, then off. And depending on how the shading is on your image, because you are engraving a black and white image, depending on how light it is, how dark it is, uh, where the grays and the midtones are, the laser is going to adapt to the power in which it's going to output when it crosses uh, those pixels okay the first fundamental thing that we need to know is when does your laser power on okay so if we were to draw a square and we set our maximum power to one percent when you send this to the laser is it going to mark the wood this is a fundamental question that I want to get across because if your laser doesn't, then this is where we need to find our minimum power scale, okay? The reason why we need to do a power scale is because, take my laser for example, my laser will not mark wood, so it won't fire until the minimum power is set at 9%, okay? So if my engraver was set to zero, all of those low shaded greys won't be marked because all the way up to 9%, the laser's not actually doing anything. So in order to find out what the minimum scale is, we need to find out when our laser turns on, okay? The most simple way of doing that is literally just come across the light burn. We're just gonna draw a square and whatever layer we're on, so I'm on 0, 0, the black layer, I am going to set this to 5%, okay? Maximum power, 5. Okay? And what that's going to do, I'm just going to send this across the uh, laser, and that's going to engrave, or not in my case, but this may or may not mark your wood. If it does mark it, then come back across to the uh, layer again, and drop it down, like on the maximum power, drop it down to 3%. Do the test again. If it marks the wood, then you need to drop it again. So exactly the same, drop it down. Until your laser engraver doesn't mark the wood. So let's take the scenario where your laser engraver is marked at 6%. That means your minimum power needs to be set at five because that is a percent lower than when your laser engraver is marking. So when you have the whitest of whites in your image, that's going to be firing at 5%, okay? Anything over that threshold is then going to go to 6%, so it's going to just start marking the wood at that point. And that is one of the most fundamental things that you need to get right when it comes to 
um, finding your baseline, okay? On the opposite end of the scale, it doesn't mean that you have to engrave at 100% power. If you're engraving from 5% to 100%, you'll probably end up with potentially holes going straight through your wood. So now you need to find your maximum power. What we're gonna to do to find your max power is we're gonna find a grayscale test. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Google and we're gonna type in grayscale test. That's gonna come up with uh, these sort of little images. If we click on images, uh, we can find this one here. All we're gonna do is right click and copy this image. We're going to right click in Lightburn and select paste. And this is the image that I have brought in already. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. So th this test card has been made up for my laser engraver specifically. So what it's actually, so what it's actually given me, I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera okay or not. Now, I don't know if you can read this, but my minimum power at zero is actually at 9%. Okay, and my max power for this uh, test card is at 11.4%, just under here. So if I was to go any higher on my uh, power scale, that means that all this would do is make my engraving deeper, which would be fine if I'm looking to do like 3D relief, uh, but that's not what I'm looking at to get across today when it comes to image engraving. Okay, we wanna get the best uh, results possible for creating an image on wood, not making a 3D relief. So the way in which we're going to engrave this image is we're going to select the image itself, select a layer for it to go onto. So I've selected the red layer for this. If you come across to the cuts and layers window, if you right click on the red layer tab, it will flash up on what is selected as uh, the red image. If we double click on that, it's going to bring up this window. In our example, the laser didn't turn on until it was at 6%. So the laser is still going to be off at 5%. So our minimum power is going to be set at 5%. Okay. So with my last diode laser, I was using roughly 60% power to get the best contrast I can get out of that diode laser. So I'm just going to leave that at 60%. Um, I've just changed my Z offset to zero because that's going to be our last key point that I'm going to go across. The image mode, I'm going to leave my image mode on Jarvis. I suggest you guys do the same. I'm going to leave my DPI at 270 just because I know that I've dialed in my DPI already to 270. You can leave it at the base settings. It's not going to matter too much for the uh, power scale for the time being. So what we're gonna do is come across to the text box and just type out all the parameters that we've just put into that box. So speed, uh, 400, and Jarvis. Okay, so I'm just gonna select these and I'm just gonna change the color to black. Uh, so this will be an engrave setting when it comes to doing the test card. Just gonna shrink these down uh, so we're not taking up too much space so once you're at a point similar to this you can put in these uh, percents underneath the image if you really want to it's not necessary uh, but you can do if you want to and what we're going to do is just type in the parameters that we had so we had uh, 400 speed max power was 60 and the minimum power was 5% in our example. You can set this up however you want. And my DPI was 270. And again, this may differ from, and again, this will differ from machine to machine, but DPI is gonna be the next thing that we're gonna get into, okay? So what you're gonna to need to do is run this test. If your max power is too high, reduce it, run the test again, and do this until you get the best contrast in color as you can. And that is going to be all you need to set up your power baseline. You'll never have to do it again for this laser. So I hope that was clear enough for you guys. The next key thing we're gonna get into is gonna be our DPI. 
And to do that, we need to bring in an image. Unfortunately for you guys, it's going to be an image of my face. So if we just go to our folder, drag and drop an image in. Now, I wanted to use this image specifically, and there is a reason for this. It's not just the fact that I look like I need to be put on a most wanted poster. But the fact is that this was just taken by my camera phone. So a lot of tutorial videos on YouTube, people have taken extremely high definition uh, pictures from Google. So what I wanted to show you with this image is this is a picture that I've taken from my phone. So this is the kind of quality image that you are expected to probably produce for a customer or a friend, whether you're doing it as a gift. It's more than likely going to be taken on a phone. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to draw a box over something that is the focal point of uh, the picture. So in this case, I'm going to draw a box sort of over the top of my cap and down half of my face. And this is going to be the baseline for our test for DPI. So once we've drawn a box, I'm going to select both images by uh, clicking and dragging up and left to select both the box and the image. I'm going to right click and click on apply mask to image. Okay, and what it's going to do is give us a window of the image in which we're going to engrave. That means we're not engraving the whole picture, we're just taking a small part of that picture so we can get the most detail, the most definition we can out of that picture. So once we've done this and you've selected the most prominent part of that picture, we are going to select both of them and then here, so if you right click, here you will find flatten image mask. And what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to destroy the picture um, behind it. So you can't click on anything behind it now. It's gone. Okay. So with this image, we're going to right click and go to adjust image. And that's going to bring up this pop-up menu here. And what I like to do to begin with is bring the gamma all the way down to zero. So on the left hand side, we've got our image that was brought in. That's how it was. And on the right, this is our adjusted image. This is what it's going to look like um, after processing. So I've taken the gamma all the way down to zero. And I'm just going to bring it up until we start seeing contrast of colors. So we can see that the white is now getting picked up in the background. The lip is coming through on the right hand side. I would say we are roughly about there. What I'm looking to do is get the noise out of the background. So I'm going to take a look at the contrast now. So the darks are going to get darker and the whites are going to get lighter. I'm just going to bring that up. I'm just going to keep clicking until I get rid of that noise in the background. That way nothing's going to be engraved in the back. The hairs are now going to become more pronounced in my moustache and beard. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit more. And the white of my eye is now just coming like to white white. Now my nose is slightly getting blown out. So that's not going to engrave either. So this is probably about as far as I want to go when it comes to the contrast. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is bring up the uh, sharpness of the image and that's going to bring out the hairs more. It's going to give more definition to uh, like around the eye in the hat. Um, so we're just going to creep these up now until we start getting some results. So going up to roughly about seven and do the enhance amount and see how the image is changing. I reckon I need to do a little bit more. And I reckon we are there. So you can scroll in with your wheel. If you scroll up, you can zoom in. And if you scroll down, uh, yeah, if you scroll down, then it'll zoom out. So we can see now that up here, we've got some really dark areas. This is probably one of the darkest areas on the image. The pupil of my eye is still black. It's not 
washed out and the hairs have definition the lip is coming through uh, and the greys have some sort of shading in there as well so that's probably about as good as I'm gonna get it okay so we're just gonna select OK and that's going to apply this to our test so what we're gonna do now with our image being processed the way in which we want it we're gonna take this image and we're gonna duplicate it uh, at least two or three times okay and then the same as what we did before with the power scale we're gonna select an image we're going to assign a layer so I'm gonna click on the uh, red layer again so if you go to the cuts and layers window again and right click you'll see that the image is flashing I'm gonna double click on image and we're gonna set the DPI to 254 that gives a 0 0.1 millimeter interval so we already have our minimum and maximum power settings dialed in so we're just going to go for a base setting of 254 dpi for the first test so now that we have everything set up for sending to the laser engraver you can either send it one by one which is fine uh, but what i would suggest you do is go to your next image uh, select a different layer it's got to be a different layer so I'm gonna uh, select it to be green and now it's flashing what we're gonna do is make sure that these uh, parameters are the same when it comes to speed max power and min power so maximum power was 60 and minimum power was 5% the only thing that we're gonna change is the DPI so we're gonna go from 254 to 270 and then click OK. So this layer is now set as well. We're then going to go to the next picture and do exactly the same. So we're going to select the picture, we're going to come back down to the bottom um, layers tab, and we're going to select yellow. If we go to the cuts and layers window and right click, our image is going to flash. So double click on your layer, and that will bring up the layer tab. And again, we're going to make sure that the parameters are set the same, 60 and 5%. Make sure that everything else is the same. And then we're going to set this to 290. OK, select OK. So like we did before, uh, where we put the speed and power and everything else, we don't need to label these images with the speed and power again. But what we do want to do is go to the text and put in our DPI setting. So for the first layer, it was 254. For the second layer, it was 270. And for the third image, it was uh, 290. I think it was 290. Uh, just select these again, make sure it's on your engrave uh, layer, set that to fill. And then what you want to do is send these across to your laser engraver, let it run the job through. And what you're going to end up with, I haven't brought my uh, test card, but what you're going to end up with is something along the lines of three images like this. So once you've run that job off, you'll be able to tell by those images which DPI setting is giving you the best level of detail when it comes to um, producing laser engraved images onward. So that is our second key point. For me, 270 is a great baseline. It gives me a decent engrave, but it also does it at a very good speed as well, because the more lines that you pack in, the longer it's gonna to take to engrave. That's all, that's all it comes down to. Um, so you need to try and find that trade-off between this is going to take me an hour and a half and I'm getting the best image possible. At, but if I run it at a slightly lower DPI, I'm still getting a very good image, but it's only taken me an hour. Yeah, so you're, you're gaining half an hour for a job, but it's a trade-off to the best quality you can actually output. So it's something that you have to really think about when it comes to DPI. The job will take longer the more lines that you put in. It's just how it is. But that is the second key thing that we needed to get through when it comes to getting the best images for your laser engraver. Now the third thing is a very simple thing. And again, 
all of these things you only have to do the one time and that will be everything set for that specific laser engraver like you haven't got to worry about it again you already know what the settings are so the last key point that i want to get across is how far to defocus your laser so if i just draw a quick diagram i'm going to put that onto a red and make it a fill and then i am going to draw a triangle where shapes properties shape properties three my microphone's in the way come to the select tool drag this up just going to do a quick diagram so hopefully you can uh, see what I was going for there just going to select these and weld them duplicate that Flip it round. So, this is our laser. Okay, I'm just going to move this over actually, just so we don't have my face in it all the time, if you don't mind. So, imagine that this is our laser, okay, and our material. select and make that black our material at its most focused <coughs> is going to be at this uh, point of contact so if you can imagine if you can imagine this is the laser beam coming out of the module it then hits a uh, it then hits your lens okay just imagine that's your lens it then focuses this beam to a point. This is the point of convergence here. This is bringing our material into perfect focus where the tip of this beam is hitting the top. If you're wanting to cut a piece of material, ideally you want to be looking at the center of your workpiece. That way you will get a slightly wider curve at the top and it will be pretty much the same on the back end. So you can sort of see that it will go through something like that. Yeah, if that makes sense. I know it's rough, bear with. When it comes to, uh, when it comes to talking about defocusing a laser, the reason being is when you process an image, images are processed in pixels, they are square. So if, if we're trying to engrave a square pixel, Bring that to a different layer so we're trying to engrave this square pixel the problem that we have is when we are completely focused we lay down a round dot maybe a little bit offset so potentially more like an oval but this is the effect that we're going to basically generate okay just select that to a black layer. So when we engrave, the laser is going to fire and it's going to produce that black dot. So if I was to duplicate that and bring that across, this is kind of how your laser is going to perform. It's going to place a dot, then it's going to turn itself off, it's going to turn itself back on again, according to what your image is saying that it needs to produce, whether it's a really dark dot so your power is going to be on its maximum setting for the parameters that you've put in or whether it's a light dot and there is no dot there at all okay so there might just be a gap the problem being is is that like i said before images are um, generated in pixels and pixels are square and our dots are round and what that means is is that when it comes to the next line we are always going to be left with a gap in between, even when it comes to the darkest points. Okay. So when it comes to defocusing the laser, I hope you can kind of see what 
I'm trying to illustrate here and it's going to start covering up um, these bits of white areas. The effect that this has is going to be better if your dots are overlapping slightly than it is if you don't. Okay, so I'm going to take this uh, DPI test at 270 as uh, principle because I know that this is what my laser engraver works at best. What we're going to do it, uh, with the settings, I think this is on the green layer. Um, we go across to the green layer at the DPI setting of 270. This uh, setting in Lightburn is only applicable to those if you have a uh, auto focus feature on your machine. If you go to Z offset, you can set this to a millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters. Do the same test over again, what you have done already with your DPI test, and see which result is better. For those of you that don't have an autofocus feature, because it is a luxury, let's be honest, um, whatever thickness your card is, either measure or find something that's a millimeter thicker, two millimeters thicker, and then run these tests again. So. You're going to defocus your laser by a millimeter, run the test at the DPI that looks the best, and then do the same. So defocus your laser by another millimeter and run the test again. Once that test is finished, run it one more time at three mil, and you should be able to see a drastic difference between the DPI test that was set at zero and the DPI tests that are set at one, two, and three millimeter defocused setting. And that image that gives you the best setting for your defocus, so you have your best DPI, your best power settings, and your best defocus setting, whether it's zero or whether it's three, no matter what it is, that is going to be the best image you can produce with your laser engraver. Okay, I hope that this video has given you some insight on how to get the best images possible out of your laser engraver. I know it's been a long one. Thank you so much if you're still around. If you are still around, just say, hey, Johnny, uh, great video, whatever. Even if it's a bad video, just say, oh, I can't believe I wasted all my time with this. Just leave a comment. Let me know that you made it to the end. I appreciate you all so much. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer them. Uh, I always try to do my best to answer all messages that I can. I know I haven't responded to a couple uh, of the last ones. And that's it. That's the three key things that you need to have fundamentally dialed in for your laser engraver. And I know that this has been a very long video, but I promise you, you only need to do this once. You only need to do it once. You, you've got all the settings, you've got your DPI set and your defocus and your min max power settings. So every time you laser grave on this specific type of material, you already know what the settings are. I hope this video has helped. Uh, I really do. Um, I know that I was struggling when I first started to get a decent image out of my laser engraver. And I just thought it was probably, oh, it's a really bad image. Um, it's been taken on your phone. I just wanted to put this video out to showcase that this is possible, even if it is a picture that's been taken on somebody's phone. You can do the best you can for that individual. If you got any value out of this video, please press the like button, click that subscribe button and the little bell next to it. That way you'll get notified whenever I release new content to hopefully help you again in future. Anyway, this is my process. If you have a different process, please share it in the uh, comment section below because it's not only going to help me, like I will probably try your method on how you engrave things, see if it's any better than my method because there might be something that I need to uh, potentially look into myself, but it might not just benefit me, it may benefit others as well. So please leave your comments in the uh, comment uh, section below and I will hopefully see all you guys in the next one. Bye for now.